with a fantasy football season and he has a few quarterbacks i looked at off the waiver wire this week the first guy Jameis winston of the new orleans saints so Jameis had a pretty decent ball game in week one versus the atlanta falcons 269 pass yards two touchdowns nine rushing yards and a two-point conversion so he left the game for a little bit in that one nicked up but he came back in the game and they came back in the fourth quarter and won and he hit Michael Thomas in the corner in the end zone for two touchdowns with Jameis Winston. So Winston right here has a tough matchup versus the Tampa Bay Bucks here in week two. I'm not saying to go out there and start him immediately, but definitely a guy to keep an eye on on the waiver wire. And if you're in deeper leagues or two quarterback leagues, then obviously you're probably going to start Winston. You know he wants to get some revenge on his former team here. And it's going to be a good divisional matchup. Bucks are going to be favorites to win that game versus Winston and the Saints, but the Saints, they got some decent weapons. We saw Michael Thomas finally have a good game, even though he was idle for the last two seasons and didn't do anything. Chris Olave, he had a few catches in this game, but Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram, they were quiet in this one. So I think it's gonna be a little bit of a tougher time here for Winston in week two versus Tampa. But if the Saints are trailing early and often, he's gonna have to air it out. And that's where he could get some fantasy points, either in garbage time or just a high volume of throwing in general here. So Winston available right now, 54% of fantasy leagues. And he's a quarterback I would add off the wire this week. The next guy is Carson Wentz, uh, the Washington Commanders. So Carson Wentz had a good debut in his commander debut with a huge fantasy day. 313 pass yards, four touchdowns, 12 rushing yards, and a two-point conversion. So he was hitting everybody on that offense. Curtis Samuel, he had a touchdown. Johan Dotson was going to be one of the best pickups this week at the wide receiver position, the rookie with two touchdowns. And Terry McLaurin, what a long one down the field as well. So Wentz doing what he does, the gunslinger mentality. He was airing it out, and he had a huge fantasy day with 37 fantasy points in six-point touchdown league. So right here, Carson Wentz in week two. He's got another good matchup at the Detroit Lions. We just gave up 38 points to the Philadelphia Eagles. Even though we know the Eagles is a good offense, this Detroit defense just can't stop anyone. So if you're in a pinch in deeper leagues or if even in 12 team leagues, you've got an injury or something. If you're a Dak Prescott owner and you want to roll with Carson Wentz, I think here in week two, we could have a decent ball game at Detroit. I'm not going to say he's going to get 30 plus fantasy points. But anywhere from 18 to 25, I think is pretty reasonable. And he's got some decent weapons on this offense, like I mentioned. We even saw Antonio Gibson have a good ball game, catching the ball out of the backfield as well. So Carson Wentz right now available in tons of fantasy leagues. If you're in a pinch, like I said, if you're a Prescott owner or whatever, he's a pretty decent ad this week. The next guy, Matt Ryan of the Indianapolis Colts. So Matt Ryan in his Colts debut, he didn't throw for... He only threw for one touchdown in this one, but the passing yards were up there. 352 pass yards, a touchdown, and then throw 12 rushing yards and a fumble loss. And week two here, he's got a great matchup at the Jacksonville Jaguars we, that we just got that we just swore got shredded by Carson Wentz here. So Matt Ryan, him and Michael Pittman have a good rapport already on that offense. The rookie Pierce, him and Ryan were off on a few plays in that ball game and you got Jonathan Taylor could also do damage out of the backfield and open things up obviously and Naeem Hines had a decent receiving game so right here Matt Ryan he's getting acclimated with his weapons still had a decent day with 18 fantasy points even though you want to see him throw more than only one touchdown in that ball game here but here at Jacksonville I think they keep it rolling is his call team I know it was disappointing for them obviously to end up in a tie but they were down 20 to 6 in this game so they came back in the fourth quarter and ended in the tie but Matty Ice and this Colt team that look pretty good on offense for the most part here and versus a weak Jacksonville secondary I think Matt Ryan could cook in this one and have another good ball game and he's available right now in 57 percent of fantasy weeks the next guy is Baker Mayfield of the Carolina Panthers so it didn't look pretty for Baker Mayfield in his week one game but he still finished up with decent fantasy numbers 235 pass yards a touchdown and in those six rush yards and a rushing touchdown so right here week two it's got a pretty good matchup at the new york giants is baker mayfield but only in the deeper leagues i would even consider to start him but as a backup quarterback on your rust i don't think it's that bad to have baker on your team and right now he's available in 82 percent of fantasy weeks him and robbie anderson they hooked up for a deep ball in that one for 102 yards and a touchdown anderson had that game him and dj moore just weren't hitting much but ian thomas he had a couple grabs in this game as well and christian mccaffrey always a good threat as long as he's healthy to catch the ball out of the backfield so baker still getting used to the offense over here in carolina 
versus his former team, the Browns. He gave his team a chance to win. But at the end, the Browns drove down and won with a winning field goal. So right here, Mayfield, I know he didn't look great. I know a lot of passes were off. A lot of timing was off with his receivers. But for a fantasy option is in a decent matchup with the New York Giants, I think he could get 18 to 20 fantasy points. And he's a guy to consider on the waiver wire. This week is not, you know, that crazy breakout quarterback on the wire, but it's some decent options, especially if you're a Prescott owner or in two quarterback leagues and the fifth and final quarterback. I looked at on the wire this week. Why is Geno Smith of the Seattle Seahawks? So Geno Smith, he had a great game. You can't take nothing away from him in a good ball game versus a good defense in the Denver Broncos in week one. 195 pass yards, two passing touchdowns, and 14 rushing yards. So Geno, he was smart with the ball in this one. A lot of check downs, I know, but he didn't make bad decisions. He was hitting what the defense was giving him. And he's got decent weapons around him. DK Metcalf, obviously. Tyra Lockett, he didn't do much in this ball game at all, though. Rashad Penny, he had some good burst in this ball game. And the tight ends have been Geno Smith's friend. With Parkinson in this one, Will this we and Noah Fant getting a few grabs. So he spreads the ball out. Week two, not the greatest in matchups at San Francisco. Only way I would use him is in two quarterback leagues or a deeper league Prescott owner and could, couldn't get any of those other quarterbacks I mentioned in this video. But the quarterback Geno Smith's available in 96% of fantasy weeks. It's a few quarterbacks I looked to head off the wire here for week two of the fantasy football season.